I now have the great pleasure of introducing an esteemed Texas engineering alumnus, a man who is an international leader and who has spent his career advancing the ed education profession through research, education, and public service. To my, tonight's commencement speaker, Sergio Manuel Alcocer Martinez de Castro. Sergio holds a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, and he earned a PhD in structural engineering from the Cockrell School in 1991. He currently serves as Undersecretary for North America in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico. He is also the president of the Academy of Engineering of Mexico and a member of the Mexican Academy of Sciences. In his current role in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sergio is responsible for strengthening ties in North America through trade, labor, investment, and cultural exchanges. Sergio has also served in the Ministry of Energy as Undersecretary for Strategic Planning and Technology Development. After graduating from UT, Sergio returned to Mexico where he joined the faculty in structural engineering at UNAM. His research focused on the behavior of concrete and masonry structures during earthquakes. Sergio also served in a number of administrative roles as head of structural and geotechnical engineering and later director of research at CENAPRED, the National Center for Disaster Prevention. He subsequently served as director of the Institute of Engineering, provost and vice president for innovation and development at UNAM. In recognition of his career accomplishments, the Cockrell School will also be honoring Sergio later this evening as a distinguished engineering graduate. He is a shining example of leadership in education and public service. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Sergio Alcacer. Thank you, Dean Wood, for your kind introductory remarks, and thank you for this great honor. Good evening, fellow Longhorns. What a privilege to be here today with the 2015 graduating class of the Cockrell School of Engineering. This is a very special day for each and every one of you, and it is a distinct honor for my family and me to be part of your celebration. Let me begin by offering my sincerest congratulations on your successful completion of what I know from my experience to be a sometimes grueling course of study. Those long days and nights, some of which blended into the other, I am sure, have proven not only your intelligence, but your character as well. Thanks to your hard work and dedication, you have reached this important milestone, the first in your professional life. So you deserve to celebrate with your family and friends, an alumni like me, who know that the strength of this university is based on the strength of its graduates. And that is what you will be in a few short minutes, a graduate of the University of Texas at Austin. Let me begin with a few words of thanks. First, I want to thank your parents and relatives for the support they have given to each one of you. You graduates, are the direct result of love, effort, and commitment of your family. They deserve special recognition today, too. So please allow to extend, to extend my warmest congratulations to your family members as well. Of course, there is no other part of a school system as important as its professors. So thank you also to the faculty present here tonight for your hard work and dedication in training all these bright minds and for helping them reach this magnificent accomplishment today. All of us have days in our lives that define us. Our graduation day is one of them, as is the day of our wedding or the day that our children are born. Some defining moments are happy ones, others are painful. I'd like to tell you about a day in my life that changed me forever. The day was September 19, 1985. That's almost 30 years ago. Some of you in the room were not even yet born. It was the day that a large devastating earthquake occurred in Mexico, causing over 10,000 deaths and damaging more than 1,000 buildings in Mexico City alone. That unprecedented and unpredictable event changed the lives of thousands, including mine, forever. 
While I was fortunate that none of my family or close friends suffered death or significant property damage, it was impossible not to be affected by the event and the fragility of life that I witnessed. I was, at the time, a young engineering student at the National University of Mexico, UNAM. In the days following the earthquake, I visited the most heavily struck areas, witnessing indescribable and shocking destruction and damage. But at the same time, and perhaps more importantly, I also witnessed the solidarity and the strength of people helping others with the little they had left. Destiny works in very strange ways. For some, the earthquake, the earthquake meant loss. For me, it meant inspiration, driving me forward to seek an opportunity to come to the US for graduate school. I was given the choice of coming to the University of Michigan or to UT Austin. Clearly, I made the right selection as I chose UT, where I completed my PhD. I am as proud as you are of being a graduate of this great university. It was here that I learned from my professors the values of devotion to your work, discipline, intellectual creativity, as well as the processes by which engineers solve problems. I learned that your title, whether a PhD, master's, or bachelor's, are of little relevance if you lack the passion, the commitment, and the integrity that allows us to strive for excellence in all that we do. When I finished grad school, I went back to Mexico because I felt that was my duty. I returned to my alma mater, UNAM, as a professor thinking that I would devote my entire research to studying concrete structures, which was the topic of my doctoral work at UT. However, on my very first day on the job, I was assigned to work on masonry, which is a prevalent construction material in my country. While it was not what I had expected, I entered this field with confidence because I knew that the strong foundation I had built at UT would serve me as I understood undertook this new area of study. As part of this research, I was tasked with developing a new building code for masonry structures. When I now look at the numerous large housing complexes in Mexico that have been designed and constructed by the code we developed and that have adequately performed during recent earthquakes, I am privileged witness to the real value of engineering studies. The most important skill that you have learned here at UT is to shape scientific knowledge into structures, equipment, and processes that can improve the lives and well-being, as well as the hope and self-esteem of thousands, and why not millions of people. Engineering has been at the forefront of our civilization, applying generations of scientific knowledge to solving societal needs. Engineers use the minimal resources available, as well as incomplete sets of data acknowledged to solve problems. To cope with the unknown, engineers develop and refine, over time, a truly powerful tool, their professional judgment. You, too, will become experts in the process of evaluating challenges, discerning best courses of action, and applying real-world solutions to better your families your communities, and your countries. You graduate today with the fundamentals that you need to succeed, but I encourage you to be patient with yourselves as you continue to grow and learn in your professional lives. And most critically of all, learn to be astute observers, aware of both the big picture and its details, cognizant of what has been tried and what is left to be discovered. In this way, you will develop the professional judgment that you need to succeed. While scientists study what exists, we engineers design, build, and manufacture what does not exist for the benefit of the society. These can be in the areas of water and sewage systems, clean and affordable energy, or health solutions. All of these are important, and all of them are waiting for your leadership and your innovation. We live in a world with large inequalities, 
in which poverty, limited access to drinking water and sewage, and crippling and sometimes ancient diseases continue to exist. Most of the times, we tend to think that these inequalities are only present in other countries on other continents. No, that is not the case. Even within our own cities and our own neighborhoods, here in the United States, those challenges exist. You have the talent and the privilege of being engineers. And that privilege brings the responsibility for and the opportunity to improve the lives of those around us. As the UT motto claims, what starts here changes the world. So while I share your delight in celebrating your graduation, I urge you to continue your hard work in the future. Exercise your leadership. Give back to your community and country. Be the person to ensure that the world's most vulnerable populations have the drinking water and sewage systems they need. Develop green energy projects. Prepare our society to compete. But how can you do this? Well, simply by using the principles you have learned at this fabulous university. First, you need to identify and conceptualize the problem. Second, you need to develop technical and feasibly, economically feasible solutions. Third, you need to design the most appropriate solution. And finally, you need to assess the impact of your solution. In my time at the Ferguson Structural Engineering Laboratory in the northern part of campus, I learned, among many other things, how to mark cracks in concrete structures, how to test concrete cylinders for assessing their compressive strength, and how to use strain gauges for evaluating member deformations and stresses. All these skills have been valuable in my academic career, as well as in teaching me how to be a good engineer. But I also learned that perseverance and patience are important values for life. It was obvious that if I did not show up to the lab, nobody would test my specimens, no one would break the concrete cylinders, and nobody, believe me, nobody, would volunteer to demolish my specimens with the jackhammer. I learned that if you want things to happen, you need to take responsibility and do them yourself. Do not rely on others to do what you need to do. Some people may ask what an engineer is doing as the Undersecretary for North America at the Mexican Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Why is it that a civil engineer trained to mark cracks, to break concrete specimens, and to use jackhammers is in charge of Mexico's single most important bilateral relation the one with the United States. What is the value that such an engineer adds to our country's relations? Before I give you my answer, let me share you with some data. I do this because I know that we engineers understand concepts through numbers and drawings. The trade in 2014 between Mexico and the US amounted to 534 billion dollars. That is equivalent to the budget needed to run 200 UT Austin campuses annually. From these 534 billion, over 190 is derived from trade with Texas alone. Mexico is the single largest trading partner for Texas, more than doubling the trade with Texas' second largest trading partner, Japan. But the relation is not limited to trade. It is based on friendship and family. Over 35 million people from Mexican origin have chosen the US as their home. We have one million Americans living throughout Mexico. We have developed a very collaborative partnership that defines North America as the most dynamic and exciting region in the world. To answer the question as to why they asked an engineer to fill this critical foreign policy position in Mexico, I go back to those principles and lessons acquired while at UT. 
passion and commitment to giving back to my country, dedication to improving reality for future generations, and integrity in working to advance the best interests of my country and the region that we share with the United States and Canada. It is directly thanks to my training as an engineer that I have been able to identify, conceptualize, design, and optimize solutions to our joint challenges. In this journey of being a professor, provost of UNAM, and public servant, I've also learned that you should remain open and flexible for further learning, even outside of your field of engineering. Be aware that your present interests may change with time. Don't be afraid of the unknown or of new professional adventures. Keep on taking risks. Question conventional wisdom. Your talent, qualifications, and education are your prime sources for success. Use them wisely with doses of integrity, perseverance, and patience. And I assure you that you will succeed. And one last word of advice. Remember that success is measured by who you are and not by how much you have. Material possessions, the cost of your car, the size of your office, the size of your house, none of these makes you a better person. Instead of striving for money, choose to be rich in goals and ideas. Look for lasting achievements and for building character over fame. Dear class of 2015, you are graduating at an amazing time and from one of the premier schools of engineering in the world. These are the times in which technology, innovation, and competitiveness are essential for our society's prosperity and for helping reduce inequalities. Exercise your profession with dignity, integrity, passion, and commitment to society. Practice what you have learned at UT with enthusiasm and optimism. Engineering is indeed founded on math and physics, the skills that remain a mystery for large parts of the general public. Professionals in our field build the Acropolis, the pyramids, the aqueducts, as well as the roads, power grids, and computers that define our world today. Engineering at its best goes far beyond calculations and figures. It goes directly to the service of humankind. It is a profession that has helped people have better, safer, and healthier lives for thousands of years. I am confident that your families, your professors, and alumni like me will witness your contributions to humanity in the years to come. Congratulations once again Thank you, and have a good night.